Our world is beautiful, undergoing constant evolution spanning over millions of years. Land shaped by the mighty oceans, creatures nurtured by the soil, a place we all call home. Though this home can be easily disrupted, pollution flows through the water and air, Resources are in constant battle among species. But from the darkness grows hope. Many have seen the destruction and are fighting for a new, brighter future. Join Blank Park Zoo and our conservation partners in efforts to protect the plants and animals that call Earth home. Take a step back in time with Aldabra tortoises. Explore the secrets of the Congo with Okapi. Discover the majesty that is the Amur tiger. This is Hope for the Wild. Hello and welcome to Hope for the Wild, presented by Blank Park Zoo. The jungle is home to many mysteries. In the dense forest, it's easy for our minds to play tricks on us. For instance, imagine you're walking through the forest and you see what looks like a short giraffe with a rear of a zebra. While this might sound far-fetched, it's actually a lot of people's first impression of the okapi. Let's uncover the mysteries of this elusive animal and discover, connect, and take action for the okapi. An okapi is a large elusive animal that has hooves has large ears, a prehensile tongue, and fancy zebra-like stripes on its rear end. Okapis are not related to zebras. They are actually related to giraffe. They're the only living relative to giraffe, um, but they do look like they're a mix of animals, but they're uh, specifically designed to camouflage into their habitat of the rainforest. Okapis can be known to live from 15 to 20 years in the care of humans. Um, it is not quite sure how long they live in the wild compared to, um, you know, in zoos um, because they are so elusive, they, it's harder to research and track their lifespan. Okapi can eat a large variety of browse, so in the wild they are known to eat over a hundred different species of plants. Um, here they love our browse, we have multiple species of edible browse for them. They also eat hay and a specialized diet with pellets and produce. Okapis are found in the rainforest of the Congo in Africa. So there's an ore called coltan that is used in smartphones and other tech, um, and that's being mined, and that destruction of that crucial rainforest is depleting the populations. There is a project called EcoCell, and we actually have a drop-off here at the zoo. So if you recycle your cell phones, that, that product doesn't need to be mined. Um, it can be recycled for newer gadgets, so that's one way you can protect the habitat and protect okapi. The okapi is essential to the ecosystem. Um, they are considered an umbrella species. An umbrella species is a species that is used to make conservation-related decisions um, based on the other animals in the area that are vulnerable. So protecting the okapi means you're also protecting the habitat of gorillas and chimpanzees. Okapis are so special because not only are they the only living relative to giraffe, but they are such a unique looking animal, you know, with their velvety fur, their large ears, um, and they're actually a national symbol to the people of the Congo. 
Um, and so they're really uh, iconic and special to the people of Africa. Their tongue is long enough to clean their eyes and ears. Okapis are herbivores, feeding on the leaves, buds, and fruits of trees, as well as ferns, grasses, and fungi. They can eat 40 to 65 pounds of food every day. They play an important role in ecology of their native rainforests as they devour a variety of plants in the understory. This task is made easier by the prehensile tongue, which can grow up to 12 to 14 inches long, allowing it to wrap around the branches and strip them of foliage. Like giraffes, the tongue of an okapi is black or dark blue in color. Their tongues are so long, in fact, that okapis use them to wash their eyelids, clean out their ears, and even swat insects away from their neck. Rarely do people get to actually see an okapi. However, with more and more of their habitat being lost, the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, or AZA, have made it their mission to help protect this species. Blank Park Zoo is lucky enough to have our own resident okapi, Romakari. Let's take a moment to discover and learn more about how Blank Park Zoo staff take care of the okapi. All right, buddy, just one second. try to escape would be cool oh am we gonna reach are we gonna reach rope <laughs> so every morning we come in and we just make sure everything looks okay we can get our hands on them um, for training what we're working on right now is voluntary hoof care and having him um, accept that and know that it's not um, it's not something to be worried about I and mean, eventually we'll add more people in here um, to give him that feeling of, you know, when the farrier will come um, and make sure he's used to having multiple people in the stall. Right now it's just easier with one. He's not quite ready to move up to having a second person in the stall. Um, and so that's kind of just really just relationship building and making sure he's, he feels safe the entire time. All right, so I'm gonna run my hand down here and ask him to lift. All right, that way we can get a good look at the underside of his hoof. And since he did that really calm, we're gonna let that go down. I just run my hand down each of his legs to make sure he gets used to that manipulation, knowing that there's nothing, nothing to be worried about there. And we'll do the same thing on the front. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. I'm gonna run my hand down here and ask him to lift. Oh, you just wanna investigate. All right, lift. If you see him pull away like that, um, that's him saying he's not quite comfortable with that and we'll take it back a step. <laughs> and we'll take it back a step to it's just touching and asking him to lift. Um, and in that case, I wouldn't be holding on to it at all. Um, and we'd just give him the opportunity to follow the cue, lift his foot up and it would be over just as fast. So that's kind of the first approximation to getting him used to that. And then we kind of increase duration as you saw in the first foot. And every day before he goes out, he needs fly repellent. So this is just marigold spray. And it's been found to be really a good um, fly repellent and okapi. And it smells really good and it makes his coat really shiny um, and helps keep the bugs away because he really does not love having flies on him. So one of the things he also doesn't love being sprayed. Um, and so how we kind of work that in. So sometimes we'll spray near the ground. We'll spray in our hand and run it down so it still gets on him. He still hears the spray sound, um, but doesn't have to be sprayed directly. Good boy. And he always gets scratches in between to show how good of a boy he's being. Yeah, you're such a ham. So the okapi we have here is, his name is Romakari. So he actually came from Denver Zoo a few years ago and he is now five years old, so and we love him. <laughs> so obviously the okapi in general are just a really unique species. Um, they have the really cool coloration, like they look like nothing else that we have, um, but him specifically, he's just really personable. He always wants you to like interact with him, scratch on him, you know, you know he has certain spots that he really loves to be um, touched and you know, cause like he'll start <laughs> quivering his lips so you know you hit the right spot. Um, he's also really um, into training, so we're able to touch him kind of everywhere and we're not able to do that with every species. So um, 
just all around awesome guy. <laughs> So Roma Kari is on exhibit with two blue cranes and two yellowback dikers. Um, so the yellowback dikers also share the same space, so they're also in the jungle um, and they would be in a forested setting just like the okapi. Okapi are actually um, very rare in the wild, so you wouldn't necessarily find one um, if you were looking. So you could spend weeks out in the jungle and maybe never see an okapi. Um, that's why it took so long for us to even discover that they were there. So a lot of zoos are participating in what's called a species survival plan or SSP. Um, so what they're doing is they're looking at the genetics of the populations, kind of seeing who would be the best match for breeding and like keeping a sustainable population. So um, here we're just holding him for now. Uh, maybe in the future we would be a breeding scenario. Um, but that's why it's so important to have these species in zoos is because we are directly impacting you know the populations we have and we're, we're doing it in a way that is going to give us the best chance of having a great population in the future you know as um, the species in the wild as the numbers dwindle um, we're still having a sustainable population here. We are in a nondescript warehouse in the middle of Louisville, Kentucky, in the Midwest. Uh, we're about as far away from Africa as possible. I got involved with EcoCell in a real uh, roundabout way. Um, basically, uh, I bounced around a lot of corporate jobs, fixing computer networks, and really not interested in the mission of the companies that I was working for, so much so that I opened my mouth and was not the best employee, and I uh, got spectacularly fired a few times and deserved it. And then my dad was just like, saw me languishing in the, uh, the world of work and said, I'm starting, a, you know, I have a company going here, it's called EcoCell, I'm not doing much with it. Why don't you come see if you can't get it going? EcoCell is a 10-year-old electronics recycling company, which is kind of ancient in terms of electronics recycling. We were one of the first um, to kind of put it out there in front of the public in a way that uh, brought to light the issues of how technology impacts um, wildlife, especially in Africa, and also trying to build a smarter consumer in America. I mean, Africa, for the average consumer, is pretty far away here in America. Um, we really just want to bring to light what's happening over there. One way to do that is to offer them a recycling opportunity. There are relatively few e-waste recycling laws in America at this time, none in Kentucky whatsoever. So it's a wild west. You could perfectly legal to throw your cell phone with a battery full of arsenic and lead right in the garbage can and be done with it. Um, we're trying to intercept that. So a UPS truck pulls up here every day, unloads a bunch of boxes from anywhere from Calgary Zoo to uh, a company like Bell Helicopter or Coors Beer, you know, whoever wants to recycle their phones with us, usually to benefit a nonprofit. So we get these phones in here, um, open up these boxes, go through them, we know which phones we want to resell and reuse and which phones we need to recycle. If it can be reused, we resell it to the highest bidder. Take whatever that highest bid was and pass as much as we can um, back to the nonprofit and stay in business for ourselves. And it's like a hog farm in here. We use everything. The batteries go one place, the plastics and all the cables go another place to get recycled. And we consider uh, a city to be an urban jungle full of this material that uh, rather than go out into a pristine jungle, we figured the best place to do it would be to go right where the consumers were. All we have to do is to reclaim that stuff. It's all on this, these electronic boards. So that's our jungle out there. Our job is to get out there and get this stuff before it hits the landfill. Coltan is like this magical material that's found in stream beds um, and it holds an electrical charge better than anything man-made. When cell phone technology took off and eclipsed landlines, the, the race was on just to dig this stuff out as quickly as possible. Um, and obviously the gorilla habitats just got decimated in the process. We learned about the connection between gorillas and coltan and cell phones 
and instead of just going, hey, it's ridiculous, actually give somebody um, a way to contribute to uh, the mitigation of what was happening in the Congo. Our first client was the Louisville Zoo, and that's where we kind of got the idea. Um, let's put this in action at Louisville Zoo, and if it works, move it to Cincinnati, move it to St. Louis, San Diego, Smithsonian National Institute, Diane Fossey Gorilla Foundation, Calgary Zoo, and just built into like 110 different zoos doing this. But here at the Cincinnati Zoo, we're interested in giving people action steps to take home with them. We work hard to inspire people. We work hard to get the right information into their hands, but you just don't want to leave them with that information and nothing to do. So when we heard of EcoCell, we were like, that is a no-brainer right there to collaborate with that program because here we are talking about Coltan, and now we can give people a tangible way to help gorillas directly through cell phone recycling. We collect an estimated 10,000 cell phones every year here at the Cincinnati Zoo. That's 10,000 thoughts, 10,000 conservation thoughts that individuals have had surrounding gorillas. And that goes along with them for the rest of their lives. Gorillas have a, a strong connection to the rainforest. Gorillas are considered gardeners, so they are instrumental to a healthy rainforest and a healthy rainforest is instrumental to our survival right here in the United States. Rainforests serve as water reservoirs for our planet. They're great big sponges that hold our, our limited water supply in place. Without that reservoir, we're seeing evidence of increased temperatures, drought all over the world, and that's a direct connection to the horrible um, reduction in the amount of rainforest that's on our planet. Eventually, people are just like, of course we're recycling our cell phone. But right now, less than 10% of the cell phones in the United States are recycled. And there are estimated something like a billion in uh, people's drawers in the United States. And it is all connected. It's, it's connected from the gorillas to our aquifer out here. It's connected in every way you can possibly imagine. Um, so ultimately, if you are not being a good steward to the earth, it's going to come back and hurt you. It already is hurting us. Um, and no money is going to get reverse the effects of what we've done to ourselves. The end game for me is building smarter consumers. And that means starting off with a new generation of people almost at that point where they're getting ready to buy for themselves. And I trust that people with the right information will make the right choices. I really, really, truly believe that. The idea is that we've got to get back to just being intelligent about the way we consume resources in this community um, and the way we support each other. And I think that uh, recycling has a lot to do with that as well. The bulk of an okapi's body is covered with dark purple or reddish brown fur, which is dense and it feels like velvet. Okapis also produce oil from their skin that helps waterproof their fur, which is a beneficial adaptation to living in the rainforest. Join the conservation movement to save species like the okapi. Get exclusive Hope for the Wild merchandise to show you support this very important project. A portion of all proceeds go directly to Blank Park Zoo and their conservation efforts. Looking to become a conservationist in your own way? Stay tuned as we discuss how you can help the Okapi and their native habitat. While AZA zoos play a vital role in the protection and conservation of the Okapi, they are still wild animals. Blank Park Zoo is proud to partner with the Okapi Conservation Project to protect the okapi in their native habitat in the Congo. Learn more about how you can help connect to the work the Okapi Conservation Project is doing with local communities to protect the okapi. Hello, my name is Lucas Mears, Program Officer for the Okapi Conservation Project. We're based in the Democratic Republic of Congo in and around the Okapi Wildlife Reserve, which is thought to house the highest density of okapi throughout their range. 
Our mission at the Okapi Conservation Project is to protect the endangered Okapi and its habitat while also preserving the biological and cultural diversity of the rainforest. And we do this with a holistic approach to conservation focused on three main pillars, wildlife protection, community assistance and engagement, and conservation education and awareness. The main threat to Okapi is the loss of habitat through slash and burn agriculture, mining for minerals and other resources, and logging of the, the trees in the forest. And all of our programs are directly focused on addressing these threats, but also working with communities and government agencies and the indigenous peoples through strong, trusted partnerships. Through the first pillar of wildlife protection, we work very closely through a contract of collaboration with the Institute in Congo for the Conservation of Nature, or ICCN, which is the government authority tasked with protecting all of the protected areas within the Democratic Republic of Congo. These ICCN Eco Guards go on patrol 20 days a month, uh, removing snares in the forest, uh, removing illegal miners, uh, arresting poachers, and documenting key wildlife species that they come across while they're on patrol in the dense rainforest of, of the Okapi Wildlife Reserve. And what Okapi Conservation Project provides to these ICC and Eco Guards is uh, food rations while they're on patrol in the forest, we provide health care for the eco guards and their families, and we also provide environmental education so they're well equipped at identifying and well adept at identifying the key wildlife species uh, to document and monitor their populations while in the forest. Through community assistance and engagement, we focus on programs that improve people's livelihoods while also protecting the forest. Programs such as agroforestry, which focus on sustainable land use and increasing crop yields for farmers and their families, uh, and also empowering women through alternative livelihood incomes or alternative sources of income uh, that reduce pressure on the surrounding rainforest. Through conservation, education, and awareness, we work closely with hundreds of schools around the region to develop curricula on health and the environment. And we also develop radio broadcasts that are shared with communities across the landscape that focus on the environment, the purpose of the Okapi Wildlife Reserve, the role of the ICC and Eco Guards, and ways that they can help protect the forest while also improving their livelihoods. Over the past 36 years, we've accomplished a great deal some of our recent accomplishments that we're most proud of are the construction of several community centers for our women empowerment programs to expand upon their alternative sources of, of income and income generating strategies. Our agroforestry team planted a record-breaking 108,000 trees in one year, breaking the previous record of 80,000. Uh, these trees are nitrogen fixing trees that put nitrogen back into the soil for their crops fruit producing trees, nut trees, and primary forest trees to reforest previously abandoned plots of land to generate new forest for, for wildlife habitat. Uh, and we've also documented key wildlife species through our camera traps, including the African golden cat and several forest elephants that have long tusks, which help indicate uh, an untouched or nearly untouched area of rainforest. We're really, really excited to accomplish all of these and document these key wildlife sightings within our region. We always get asked, how can I help Okapi? Well, the first and easiest way that you can help Okapi is one, learn as much as you can about them and sharing that with your family and friends. Our biggest hurdle as Okapi Conservation Project with the global audience is just teaching people that Okapi exist, that they're their own unique species, and that they're endangered. People can't or they're not going to want to protect an animal if they don't know it actually exists or what the threats are. So that's number one. Number two, you can contribute directly to our project. We're very efficient with our funding. We have a very capable team on the ground that's implementing all of these ways to protect Okapi and supporting communities. And the third way that you can benefit and help Okapi is to visit your nearest zoo that has Okapi. A lot of our funding comes from zoos across the world that care for Okapi. And they're our biggest outreach proponents that help teach people about Okapi. And so when you visit a zoo that has Okapi, you are directly benefiting Okapi Conservation Project and helping Okapi in the wild. The stripes on an Okapi's legs provide excellent camouflage. While giraffes tend to forage in more open habitats, 
Okapis live in dense forests where they blend in uncannily well with the shadows and filtered sunlight. In addition to camouflage, the stripes also serve a secondary and seemingly contradictory purpose. Okapi stripes are sometimes referred to as follow me stripes because they're thought to help baby okapis see and follow their mothers through the vegetation. And since the stripe pattern is unique for each individual, they may also help okapis identify one another. The okapi's existence is under threat from the impact of human activities, making it an endangered species. The okapi is entirely dependent on the intact forest for its survival, and deforestation along with poaching and mining has led to the decline in numbers and loss of suitable habitat. But there is hope. Conservation works when we take action for the natural world around us. Even if you've never seen an okapi, there are actions you can take to help protect them in the wild. A lot of people don't even know that an okapi exists until they come to a zoo or maybe even see a video about it. Um, these are pretty endangered animals. They're pretty rare to see too, um, especially compared to a giraffe. <laughs> so uh, they live in the Congo in Central Africa and that's really the only place in the world they're found in. And um, they're starting to lose some of their habitat because of resources that we need for everyday life, actually. And um, that, it, that loss of habitat makes them um, a little bit more endangered all the time. And so uh, there, we're you know, trying to create that awareness for people um, so that we can help protect that habitat. This here is a real okapi fur. So their nickname is actually the forest giraffe and giraffes are their closest living relatives. Okapis are actually found in Central Africa in really dense forests and that's actually the reason that they have this kind of fur. So it's velvety and it doesn't easily get stuck on branches as they walk through the forest looking for food. They also have, it's really dark brown up top but toward the back end is white striped and that helps them blend in though some believe that these stripes could be so that young can follow their mothers easily through the forest and not get lost. So they do actually look a lot like a horse or a zebra because of their stripes. Um, but if you look at their head, you'll notice they have ossicones on their head. And uh, that the only other animal you'll see that in is giraffes. And they are genetically uh, closest to a giraffe. So even though they look a lot different, uh, they are most closely related to them, which is really cool. So when our animals end up dying of natural causes, we're able to uh, take what we need to be able to educate people. Um, so we never harm or kill our animals. We always want to see them flourish, right? And um, it's just that we're able to take fur or bones or other art artifacts from them um, that you would never normally get that close to. Um, so we like to believe that our animals, even after life, they're still able to serve our mission of education and, um, you know, inspiring that appreciation and connection with nature as well. We actually support this initiative called EcoCell, and that way, and we actually are a recycling hub for that, so people can bring their old electronics to us which we can recycle and avoid having to mine those new minerals from the forests in which okapi are found. Thank you to the Blank Park Zoo staff, volunteers, and our conservation partner, the Okapi Conservation Project. It takes all of us working together to make a difference. Remember, none of this would be possible without you. Join us for our next Hope for the Wild program featuring the Amir Tiger.